Perfect. All right, so my name is Gabriela Palacio. I'm a talent acquisition specialist with ZF Group. Um, so today's topic, we'll be talking about interviewing 101, but before we go ahead and get started, um, Joseph Lynch is also on this line. He is a senior talent acquisition specialist with ZF, um, and he'll be helping answering some, some questions when we uh, go ahead and wrap up the, um, the PowerPoint for today. So without further ado, um, anything, Joe, on your end? Uh, no, I think that was great. Thank you for the introduction and looking forward to the, the presentation and answering some questions at the end. Perfect. All right. I'm going to go ahead and turn my video off so you guys won't be able to see me, but you'll still be able to hear me. And we'll go ahead and get started now. So again, today's topic is interviewing 101. Thank you guys for showing up today. Um, I really appreciate it. And this is going to be um, a pretty, pretty informative um, PowerPoint today. So in today's agenda, we're going to be covering the basics of interviewing. So um, what you wear, um, specific etiquette that you should certainly um, abide by. Um, we'll talk about video interviewing. Obviously, with today's you know current situation, we definitely need to adjust a little bit. So uh, we'll brush up on that. Um, we'll talk about proper preparation, specific interviewing questions that you should answer. Um, there are ways to answer these questions. Um, of course, you should ask specific questions as well. Um, how to send out proper e uh, thank you emails, asking for feedback, and then we'll cover some tips for addressing your previous employer. When we go ahead and wrap up, um, we're going to allow some Q&A. So go ahead and type your questions in the chat, um, and then we will go ahead and answer those when we're, when we're wrapping up today. So let's go ahead and get started. So what do you wear in an interview? Um, regardless of what you feel comfortable in, the key is to make sure that you look sharp, um, if you look good, you feel good, and you should definitely put some effort into your appearance. It really gives off a great first impression. So you can stick to a nice pair of slacks, a skirt, whatever you prefer, a um, nice button-up uh, blouse, and you should definitely stick to some neutral colors. Um, a pop of color here and there is fine. I myself am a big fan of a pop of color, um, but too much can definitely be a turnoff for some interviewers. So just keep it clean, and remember, if you look good, you feel good. So there are definitely a few things that you need to follow um, in your interview. Um, some things will seem more obvious than others, but we'll go ahead and, and go through everything. So first things first, show up on time. So early is on time, on time is late, and late is absolutely unacceptable. Um, obviously some things happen, life happens. So if for some reason you're not able to make it, be sure to reach out immediately to whomever and explain the situation. But beforehand, it's necessary that you take any potential traffic, any sort of adversity, I don't know, into consideration um, beforehand. When you arrive, make sure that you give a firm handshake to your interviewers and look them in the eye as well. So in giving eye contact shows that you are alert and engaged in the conversation and in the interview. They'll definitely remember that as well, promise. And we'll talk about that in just a minute here. So body language, make sure that you're paying attention to your nonverbal cues. So sit up straight, keep your arms crossed, or from being crossed, do not cross your arms. <laughs> um, if you cross your arms, it can actually show that you're pretty closed off. Maybe you're not feeling super confident. Um, so just try to keep your arms from being crossed and sit up straight. Um, be concise. So when we're nervous, you know, we tend to ramble. It's a just a human human thing. We all do it. Um, but try to answer the questions best to the best of your ability um, fully, but stick to answering the question. This will kind of help make sure that you don't ramble on. Um, demonstrating confidence. So a great way to think about this is think about the fact that you were selected among dozens of applicants, which you most likely were. Um, being a recruiter, you know, we do receive hundreds and hundreds of applicants, applicants and, you know, the people who, who make it through, they do meet the qualifications. So just remember that going into an interview so that you're able to kind of exude that sort of confidence. Um, and remember confidence, not, you know, don't let the ego get out of hand, but remain, remain confident, definitely. And be, be honest with your interview. So don't make anything up. If you're not sure about something, you know, you can be honest. Honesty definitely goes a long way. And if you are maybe bending the truth a little bit with your skill set, it might come back to bite you if you did get the job. So just be as honest as possible. It'll go a long way. So let's talk about video interviewing. Obviously, with the coronavirus, this, you know, your interviews might have shifted a little bit. Um, from in person to over a video. So just some tips for that. Make sure that you test your equipment beforehand. 
test the audio, test the webcam, you know, make sure everything works properly. Um, it's preferred that you use a laptop or a computer. If you have to use a phone, that's, you know, that's fine. But just make sure that it's securely propped up at an angle and clearly shows your face. So, I mean, I, I'm sure all of us would hate for us to be in the middle of an interview and then our phone falls to the ground. So just a good way to prevent that from the very get-go, just make sure that it's nice and propped up at an angle and it clearly shows your face. Be sure that you have an appropriate backdrop. So make sure that everything in your surroundings is clean and well organized. Um, ideally, you can use a blank wall. I'm sure as you saw earlier, I did not have a, a blank wall, but the background, I think my, my house is pretty clean, so that's all right. <laughs> um, sit in a quiet area. Make sure that you don't have any distractions during your interview. Again, maintain good posture. So even through video interviewing, you should make sure that you are maintaining good posture, make sure that your arms are not crossed and look directly into the camera. So um, when you look directly into the camera, it'll appear as though you're looking directly at the interviewer. And if not, uh, not so much. So definitely you'll, you'll want to, to try your best to um, continue looking directly into the webcam. And last but not least, close any programs or any applications that might slow your computer down. So no lagging, anything like that. Good way to prevent it from the start. All right. So when it comes to researching your company, you're gonna to wanna to focus on a few things. Um, we have some bullet points down below and these are just some really great, uh, great things that you can research so that you're prepared going into your interview. So um, figure out your company's mission statement and their values. You know, what's, what's this company's mantra, what are they all about? Um, what type of industry is this company a part of and what services um, and products do they provide or manufacture? Um, who is the current CEO of the company? Um, you can also research your interviewees if you know who exactly you're going to be meeting with. Um, maybe look up a couple of big events that the company is currently dealing with. Um, and of course, ask yourself, how can you be an asset for this company? So that's something that you'll certainly want to reiterate in your interview. So one thing to certainly think about. And of course, practice makes perfect, as we all know. So go ahead and study up and practice interviewing with your family and friends. Um, since they're um, aware of your experiences, you know, they may be able to help you phrase your answers a little bit better. And just to reiterate the, um, body, the, the importance of body language, so studies have shown that people form first impressions based 55% on body language. So just take that into consideration again. But yeah, so these are some great questions that you can go ahead and um, answer and you'll be prepared going into your interview when you get the notorious question of uh, tell us what you know about our company and you can go ahead and knock that right out of the park. So you'll more than likely experience some behavioral interviews. So the thing about behavioral interviews is that they can tend to be you know, more difficult to answer um, because there is no right or wrong answer. These type of questions will typically focus on how you've handled previous work situations and they are used to predict how you will behave in future situations. So let's just go over a couple of questions here. So um, an interviewer might ask you, you know, how do you handle challenges and can you provide a specific example? Uh, tell me about yourself is a classic, that's a classic behavioral question. Um, have you had to handle a difficult situation with a coworker or teammate? Tell us about it. Um, when you work on multiple projects, you know, how do you prioritize your time? How do you go about setting your goals? These are some questions that you will more than likely be asked at some point in your interview. So go ahead and practice these questions ahead of time. And you can also look up um, behavioral questions um, in, in, in interviews on a, I don't know, in, in, in a typical interview and practice those questions. So there are quite a few lists on Google as well. Um, and that will definitely help you be able to phrase your answers properly. So if you don't have any previous work experience, don't panic, that's totally fine. Again, if you have any sort of experience with uh, academic projects or clubs or any extracurricular activities that you've participated in, those can make for great examples um, and great answers. And again, go ahead and practice, 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 practice. It makes perfect. And you'll feel way more confident going into the interview as well. How do you answer these questions? So the STAR method, this is super important guys. So be sure to, when you're, when you're practicing, phrase your answers um, by the STAR method. So this technique is used by many companies and it is a great tool for you to use to learn how to successfully answer these questions. So you're gonna start with the situation. Describe what sort of situation you were in. You know, how did it arise? Um, were you working with other people? Was it individual work? Was it, what was the problem, you know? 
um, tell us about what needed to be solved and why it needed to be solved. So that's going on to task. With action, you're gonna to wanna to tell us about your plan. Um, how did you come up with this plan? How did you organize your plan? And then you're gonna go into the results. So after implementing your plan, what was the final result? So any numbers that you can include, feel free to do so. That's super important. Um, that just makes it a little bit more objective. Um, and numbers are, you know, that can certainly separate you from a different candidate as well. When your interview is coming to a close and you receive the other notorious question, do you have any questions for us? Always come prepared with questions. Um, even if you're, if you're in a video interview, a phone interview, always ask questions and you should always come prepared. So you can go ahead and write them down beforehand if you're worried about forgetting what to ask, that's completely fine. I actually did that in my interview to get this job, so it works. Um, <laughs> and a great uh, tip as well is to ask three different type, types of questions. So you will ask questions about the company, the position, and you can ask more personable questions with the interviewer. So just looking on, under um, that, those notes right there. So with the company, you wanna ask, uh, you know, where do you see the company going in the next few years when it comes to the position? What skills make for an ideal candidate? And then when it comes to the interviewer, you can ask them what they enjoy most about working for the company, why do they come to this company, um, where they see the company going, it just makes it a little bit more personable. So go ahead and uh, send out a thank you email after your interview. You have 24 hours to send this email. Um, anything later than that can certainly hinder the impact of the email. So be sure to, to go ahead and draft that beforehand and, and send it whenever you're ready. In your thank you email, you're gonna to wanna to mention a specific topic that you and the interviewer discussed um, that you found inter um, interesting. This will show that you were paying attention um, and you were being attentive. You're going to remind the interviewer why you'd be a great fit for the opportunity as well. Ultimately, you gotta sell yourself, so go ahead and use this as another opportunity to do so. And then again, be personable. So there's nothing wrong with showing your personality during and after your interview. Um, hiring managers love to hire people that you know are personable and they're able to work with other people. Um, they leave, it leaves a really great first impression. Now, obviously, in a perfect world, we would get an offer immediately after the first round. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. So sometimes we want feedback, other times we don't. But if you do want feedback, there is a certain way that you should go about it. So, um, you know, be sure to include the date, um, your name, um, the company, the street address, company, city, state, zip code, the name of the interviewer. Um, be specific and reference the job title. And then um, also be grateful. So if it doesn't go as planned, you know, it's a lesson learned. Be sure to show that gratitude to the company and they will definitely remember your attitude and possibly consider you for other opportunities in the future. And then go ahead and ask for that feedback. So you can see how this is phrased here. It's not aggressive, it's not abrasive. Um, you're just truly looking to better yourself um, for future interviews. So there are definitely some specific ways that you can phrase this so that you don't seem like, you know, you're, um, you know, you're being aggressive or, you know, you're really taken aback by not receiving an offer. It's normal. It happens to everybody. And there are definitely some good ways to go about that. And how to address your previous employer. So this is... This is very important. So mention, when you mention your previous employer, it can be a definitely a slippery slope. So you're going to want to speak about your previous employers beforehand so you're prepared. We don't want to hear about your previous employer in a negative light. So the line between bashing and being professional and honest is super thin. So um, be sure to speak the truth, but always remain uh, focused on the positives. And then a great way to deal with this as well is just mentioning some specific challenges that you might have um, gotten over, mentioning specific projects and situations that you handled and how you overcame those challenges. Um, so definitely focus on that when you're addressing your previous employer. Okay, and in short, just be sure to be confident, you know, study up, show up on time and sell what you can do. You can do it, you can definitely do it. So I hope that this helped. And without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get to Q&A. Oh, 
Um, Alex, we can, sorry, okay, yeah, Alex. we can't hear you. <laughs> um, I'm going to jump back on. If you guys have any questions, please go ahead and type them in that chat box. So we have one. Um, if you're asked a question you can't answer, what should you do? All right. Joe, do you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I guess that, you know, that's, that's definitely something that, that can happen. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're not sure of the answer to the question, I mean, you can always, I guess it would depend on what it is about the question you can't answer. If you maybe don't understand the question, you can ask for further clarification. Um, or you can always, you know, I mean, I think that would probably be the, the best step first to make sure you're understanding what it is that they're asking, mm -hmm. ask for further details. Um, I mean, if it's, if it's like a technical question that you can't answer and, and you don't know it, um, I mean, you can maybe even say that you're not 100% sure, but you can, you know, give your, your educated guess. But I think the biggest thing is just making sure that you, you know, are understanding what they're asking. And if you don't understand on, on when they first ask it, that it's like, don't panic. It's okay to ask for further clarification or maybe mm -hmm. ask them to rephrase, rephrase the question. Um, and say, hey, you know, I didn't really understand what you were asking of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally fine. So you, I was asked a technical question in, in my interview to get this job that I wasn't so sure of. And, um, you know, I was completely honest that I wasn't sure. And they actually rephrased the question to um, make it so that it would, it would have been something that pertained to my experience. And then I was able to answer it accordingly. So you speak completely honest with um, you know, whether or not you understand something, it's totally fine. Okay, thanks. Um, next question is, how should we handle shaking hands right now? Okay, so more than likely, you, you probably won't be going on site if you are going on site. Um, I know that the, the elbow is a thing, <laughs> but if not, uh, then I don't I probably just wouldn't shake hands. They could, they could, they, your interviewer will more than likely understand like why you're not shaking hands, but I've heard of that, the elbow bump, that's a new thing. Um, so that could be another possibility for you. What about you, Joe? Yeah, I mean, I think that's, I mean, right now probably a lot of things will be virtual anyway, but I, I can see in, in, the, in the near future, if we are, if you are asked to interview on site that the handshake wouldn't be a thing. Um, and I mean, maybe you can even, one question you might even want to ask before, if you are asked to do an on-site interview, um, is maybe ask, given the current situation, you know, what are the current precautions or that are being taken at that company to protect you and the interviewer during the interview, right? So, mm -hmm. um, so, th so that may help answer, answer that as well. But I know, I know I've seen the elbow bump at, as well, but maybe even just making strong eye contact and introducing yourself. I think in this certain uncertain time and, and you know, crazy scenario, everybody would probably be understanding and not looking to shake hands right now. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And you can also probably even ask the, you know, that's a great question if you do get asked um, for an on site interview to maybe clarify with your recruiter beforehand. Hey, mm -hmm. so I'm coming into the office you know, giving everything that's going on, should I, what, what would be the protocol? And they could even guide you as to what might be the best practice of that given company or organization. Right. Awesome. Um, how long do you think is too long to wait when you're thinking of a response for a question? Mm. Um, just realistically speaking, I would say, you know, five to 10 seconds, you got to go ahead and say something. Anything more than that, it might seem like you uh, spaced out a little bit. <laughs> so t five to 10 seconds to think of something. If you, I don't know, if you need an additional, you know, few seconds, go ahead and just, just let them know that you're you know, thinking of specific events. Um, but five to 10 seconds is, is ideally what you're looking for. And I think it's okay to say, um, you know, that's a great question and that you might need a minute to formulate your answer. I've seen that happen in interviews that I've sat in on before. Mm -hmm. um, and then people come up with with great answers. I mean, I think, you, you know, as long as you're a able to formulate a, you know, a good answer to the question and it shows that you're thoughtful, um, I think people will, will like that. And I think that also goes like a long way. Agreed. Definitely. Awesome. 
Um, do you guys have any tips on case interviews? So what do you mean by case interview? Courtney, ask the question. Courtney, can you give us some clarification? Courtney says a business case interview, like maybe for consulting, I'm guessing. Hmm. So I'm, I'm not really sure about that. Joe, are you sure about that? Is he still there? Hey, I'm here. Sorry, I was muted. muted. <laughs> <laughs> um, business case interview. Yeah, so that, that's actually a really good question, to be honest. I'd probably have to look. I mean, we to be honest, we don't do a tremendous amount of those at um, ZF. Mm -hmm. So I'd probably want to look more before I gave you any any you know specific advice. But I mean, we can definitely follow up with you after on how to best prepare for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not so sure. And Courtney, I'll say, we're gonna send an email from the Career Center with some follow-up information, and we have a tip sheet on case study interviews and how to prepare and that kind of thing. So I'll um, incorporate that when I send that follow-up out as well. All right, let's see. You guys are getting lots of questions, great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> how do we handle future interviews and discuss how the coronavirus may have impacted summer internship plans? So actually, can you repeat that? Sorry. Um, so how in future interviews should we discuss how the coronavirus could have impacted summer internship plans? Does that make sense? So if um, yeah, I think the best case and yeah, the, I'm sorry. I think the best case is, you know, to be, to be honest, I mean, I think that, um, you know, I'm sure a lot of in, a lot of people at this point may have had their summer internships plans uh, affected by coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, you can definitely say that, you know, if they say, okay, so I'm looking at your resume and I see, you know, there was no internship last summer, you know, you can kind of, you can explain that and say, well, you know, I was scheduled to do something, but with coronavirus, maybe I didn't have the opportunity, um, or maybe it just changes the nature of the, the internship that you're, that you're going to do. Gabby, what do you think? No, I think that's spot on, spot on. Every, you know, everything is kind of unknown right now. So given the fact that so many businesses will be impacted, you know, we're all kind of on the same boat. So in, you know, in retrospect, if you want to reference back, um, you know, what was going on during that time and um, how you were impacted, you know, that, that's totally fine. Excellent. Um, what do you think is an appropriate response for a question like, why are you leaving your current job? For example, I feel like I can't grow anymore with my current company, but I don't want to bash the employer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's a great question. Um, so you can mention growth, you know, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, sometimes businesses, the way that they're structured, you know, that is something that's a challenge for you. And um, the way that your interviewee will or interviewer will will take that is that you are looking to grow. Um, so, for instance. Um, if somebody asks, you know, why are you leaving your, your current employer? You could say, um, you know, in the future, I see myself being this and I want to work for a company that is involved in this industry. I think that my skill set, you know, I would be able to thrive in this sort of industry. So I'm just looking for, you know, a, another opportunity that will allow me to, to do so. Um, I hope that helps. But it's that's not a that's you know that what your comment was not bad that's totally fine um growth yeah, is I, good growth is good. sorry <laughs> you cut you off. i think you can um you know even you know it depends on probably what what the nature of your previous employment was and what you're looking to do but i mean sometimes it could be maybe you're looking into a different industry or maybe let's say you're you know you're in the same industry let's say automotive perhaps um but maybe the company that you're looking at focuses on different components or, or different areas of the automotive industry and you're looking to expand your skill set or your knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, you know, there, are, you know, for instance, ZF is, is, a, is a very big supplier, right? Um, you know, maybe you're coming from a company that is not, not as big and or vice versa, that is big and you maybe want to focus in and hone in on something that's a little more centralized. Right. Um, Another way you can answer that, even like specifically automotive, is if you've maybe worked in an OEM or if you're working in an OEM and you're applying to a supplier, you want to see 
you know, a different side of the process, right? You know, because things work very differently, even within the same organization, if you're the one supplying the product or if you're working at the, at the OEM. So there's a bunch of different ways you can probably tailor that question based mm -hmm. on the, the, the position company. you're coming from and the position you're, you're applying for. So, you know, just, just look for those things. And I think it's really important too, to, to honestly, I mean, when you're looking for jobs, kind of know, okay, what are, you know, what are my main reasons for looking, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what am I hoping to, to gain professionally from, from looking for a new job and kind of have those ready to go? Right. Yeah. So definitely, definitely take whatever company that you're interviewing for into consideration when you're answering that question, because that's going to be, um, I guess that's going to be your, your out to make sure that you don't bring anything negative up. You're going to want to focus on, again, the positives and um, on the company and why you'd be an asset for them. Excellent. All right. So just for sheer sake of time, I think we have one more question. Okay. Um, if you're asked a behavioral based interview question, like something like, tell me about a time. Sorry, of course, my dog barks when I'm unmuted. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, tell me about a time when you had a conflict with a coworker and you don't have a specific experience that fits that answer. Should you be honest and say how you think you would handle it? Or what do you think is the best way to answer a question like that? So I feel like, I'll go ahead and start, and Joe, you can add yeah, on if you sure. need to, but I feel like um, when we think of, you know, conflict, it automatically goes to something that's, you know, uh, really big and really, you know, uh, it, was, it was a huge deal and, and all that. Um, a conflict is the any sort of general challenge, you know, you might not think that you've experienced any sort of challenging um, conversations or had any sort of um, challenging relationships with another coworker, but chances are that you you have. Um, and again, like it doesn't have to be anything massive. Um, if you haven't had anything like that, I, I would say it's, it's not good to just make, you know, put something out there of how you would handle it. Um, I think it's really important that you speak to how you handled situations. Um, that's ultimately going to be a lot more important than how you, you know, you would handle the situation unless they ask how you would handle the situation. Well, um, and I think what you can do is if you don't have, I mean, if, if you can't think of something where maybe you've had, you know, um, a difficult situation with a previous coworker, maybe you can ask them if you can, if you can pivot that a little bit and say, well, you know, I can't, I can't think of a time right now with, with a specific coworker, but maybe it was with an, in a, in an academic project with a teammate. Mm -hmm. or maybe if you were um, like a competitive athlete, it was, you, you know, in a team sport, something with a teammate. So, I mean, I think that the biggest thing they're, they're looking for is to see how you work through conflict, right? And so if you don't have the work experience um, and you haven't maybe had that many, you know, I guess, like I said, experience general in the work environment yet, I think it's okay to say, hey, can I, can I answer that question, but frame it, you know, with, with just a different, um, from a different past experience. Because right. uh, again, I mean, the main thing is they just want to try to see how you work, what your thought process is when you're working through problems mm -hmm. and how you handle conflict. Yep. Excellent. That's super helpful. Um, and Brittany's going to jump on for just a second, just for sheer sake of time. We want to make sure we're respectful of that 1230 for everybody. Um, so thank you for everybody who asked a question and those were super helpful answers. Um, and I'm going to let Brittany jump on to kind of talk just for a few minutes. Thanks, Alex. Um, so just want to jump on here really quickly and let everybody know that if you did have some questions that um, you think of later, we're going to do the follow up email. So just um, reply to that follow up email from Alex and we can still answer those questions for you. And did really quickly want to let everybody know that we do have some workshops next week. So you can um, obviously register for, the, for them just how you did for this one. So just make sure you go to our events page to register for those. And then I just want to say another quick thank you to Gabby and Joe for joining us today. Um, I really enjoyed this topic and got a lot of, a lot of good new things that we can share with our students. So um, again, if anybody has any questions, just uh, send those to the follow-up email. And at this point, you guys can go ahead and start logging off. Perfect. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Bye.